imagine a future where, you know, one of the world's biggest health challenges, something that currently means daily medication for life, could be managed totally differently. A future where your own body is actually taught to fight off the virus. Exactly. Potentially freeing you from that daily routine. It sounds, well, almost like science fiction, doesn't it? It really does. But um, cutting edge medical research is genuinely bringing us closer to that reality. And that kind of profound shift is exactly what we're going to dig into today. Welcome, everyone, to the deep dive. Yeah, welcome. This is where we sift through you know, the complex research, pull out the really important insights, and give you that shortcut to being properly informed. That's the plan. Today, we're taking you right into the heart of the buzz from the Conference on Retroviruses and Opportunistic Infections, CROI 2025, just wrapped up in San Francisco. And we've got our hands on some genuinely groundbreaking new research. We're focusing specifically on some uh, really exciting developments in HIV cure science. Our mission for this deep dive is to unpack two key studies. They're called RIO and Freshesh. Mm -hmm. Both of these were looking at a really innovative strategy using these things called broadly neutralizing antibodies or BNABs. Right. The idea being they could potentially delay, maybe even prevent HIV from rebounding after people stop their regular treatment, their RT. So whether you're listening for personal reasons, professional knowledge, or you're just curious about major medical breakthroughs, these studies offer some crucial insights. Yeah, they go way beyond just the initial tests. They're really about reshaping how we think about HIV treatment and getting closer to, well, the possibility of long-term remission, maybe even moving beyond daily pills for millions. And just to set the scene a bit, there was a lot of anticipation around these studies. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Even before CRI kicked off, Dr. Michael Peluso, he's a prominent HIV physician, deeply involved in cure research, he actually flagged RIO and FRESH as the ones to watch. He called them out specifically. He did, yeah. In a community workshop, he highlighted their sort of unique potential. And central to both is this concept you mentioned, broadly neutralizing antibodies, BNABs. Now, these aren't your average antibodies, are they? Not at all. They're like um, highly specialized immune agents. Dr. Peluso stressed that they're really meticulously designed to target critical but different parts of the HIV virus. And he talked about a dual purpose. Exactly. Mm. He mentioned their potential to hit the most important areas of the virus, right? Either to neutralize the virus directly or, and this is key, to improve immune responses against the virus. So attacking the virus and potentially boosting the body's own defenses. Precisely. That dual action is absolutely fundamental to understanding the breakthroughs we're about to explore. Okay, so with that understanding of what these BNABs are supposed to do, let's dive into the RIO study, see how they actually performed. Right, RIO. This was conducted in the UK and Denmark. Involved 68 cisgender men. Okay. Their average age was just under 40. They had good CD4 counts, around 800 on average. So their immune systems were pretty strong going in. And crucially, crucially they'd all started RT very soon after getting HIV. So the virus hadn't had as much time to, you know, dig in and establish those deep reservoirs. Got it. So how did the study work? Well, they split the group. Half got placebo saline infusions, just salt water. The other half got infusions of two specific long-lasting DNABs. Which ones were they? The first was 3BNC117. It's designed to target the part of HIV's outer spikes that grabs onto our CD4 T cells. Mm -hmm. Like... Uh, jamming the lock mechanism. Okay. And the second was 10174. This one blocks a different part of the virus's envelope, the V3 loop. So it's kind of a double attack. A two pronged approach. Exactly. Right. And then right after the infusions, everyone stopped their daily RT. This is called an analytical treatment interruption or ATI. Basically, seeing if the antibodies could keep the virus down on their own. Right. The big test. So what happened first in the placebo group? Well, Pretty much as expected, unfortunately. Almost all of them, 28 out of 31, had their virus rebound by week 20. Meaning it became detectable again? Yes, and they had to go back on their RT. It just confirms that typically the virus comes back quickly if you stop treatment without some kind of intervention. But there was a twist, wasn't there? There was. And this is really fascinating. Two of those people who got the placebo, they still haven't rebounded. We're talking 120 weeks later, nearly two years after stopping RT. Wow, two years. Yeah, they're now considered post-treatment controllers. It's rare, but it happens that some people's immune systems just manage to control the virus after stopping meds. It really highlights, you know, how individual immune responses can be. Absolutely incredible. Okay, but what about the group that actually got the BNABs? That's the main event here. Right, and that's where the real success story was. A really significant chunk 65% of the initial participants, 
or even better, 75% of those still in the study at that point kept their viral loads below 1,000 by week 20. Below 1,000 copies, okay. Yeah, and the researchers specifically noted this might be the highest proportion of participants with delayed viral rebound yet seen in a BNAB study. It's a pretty big deal. That is a huge step. Did that success hold up longer term? It did for many. By week 48, so nearly a year after stopping RD, over half, 57% still hadn't rebounded. Still suppressed. Still suppressed. And even further out, by week 72, that's over 14 months, 39% hadn't rebounded. Amazing. And get this, seven participants, that's 24%, had truly profound suppression. Not a single viral load reading over 50 copies by that 72-week mark. Over 50? That's basically undetectable on many standard tests. Pretty much. But and in fact, those seven people showed what the researchers called complete viral suppression for up to 120 weeks, nearly two full years off RT. Which is incredible. How are they defining rebound in this study? Good question. ARIO's criteria were either a viral load over 1,000 for at least six weeks straight or two consecutive readings over 100,000 at least a week apart. So quite clear thresholds. Okay. But it wasn't perfect for everyone in the BNAB group, was it? No. Science rarely is that straightforward. There were nuances. Uh. But 23.5%, so eight people, did have rapid rebound within those first 20 weeks. Any idea why? Well, for four of them, they found mutations in the virus suggesting it had developed resistance specifically to that 10 1 on 74 antibody. Ah, the virus adapted. It looks like it, yeah. And then another group, <laughs> about 48% of the BNAB recipients had a more delayed reappearance of HIV sometime between week 20 and week 72. And that wasn't always a simple rebound either. No, often it was um, oscillating. Yeah. The viral load would pop up, then go down, maybe up again. Some got up to 55,000 before they eventually had to restart RT. That oscillating pattern seems important though, doesn't it? Like a fight is happening. Exactly, it suggests a dynamic process, like the immune system is trying to push back, even if it doesn't always win in the long run. It's not just passively waiting. So this brings us to the real why it matters moment from RIO, right? <laughs> the deeper insight. Absolutely, and this is where it gets profound. Professor Sarah Fiddler, the chief investigator, pointed out something crucial. The viral suppression they saw, especially long-term, couldn't just be explained by the antibody levels. Yes. Well, these BNABs have a half-life, right? They break down over time. For these ones, it's about 9 to 10 weeks. By week 48, the levels would have been sub-therapeutic, basically too low to be effectively blocking the virus on their own. So if the antibodies weren't at high enough levels, what was keeping the virus suppressed in so many people for so long? Great question. That's what the sub-studies looked into and they found a significant drop in something called intact proviral DNA inside reservoir cells. Okay, break that down. Reservoir cells, intact DNA. Think of reservoir cells as hiding places for HIV. The virus inserts its genetic code, the proviral DNA, into our own cell's DNA, where it can lie dormant. Intact means the viral DNA is still complete and capable of waking up and making new viruses later. Right, the dangerous stuff. Exactly. Seeing that intact, dangerous DNA decrease sometimes by up to a million sold in a third of the participants is huge. It's like clearing out the hidden enemy bases. And they saw an increase in defective DNA. Yeah, slightly. Which suggests the virus wasn't just being hidden, it was actually being broken down into non-functional bits. Okay, that's significant, but what about the immune system itself? This is the kicker. They found that the strength of the participants' own T-cell responses against HIV actually increased between the start and week 36, specifically in those who didn't rebound. Increased, even without lots of virus circulating to trigger them. Precisely. Normally, T-cells need to see bits of the virus, antigens, to get activated. Mm -hmm. But here, their response strengthened despite low or undetectable virus. This strongly suggests the BNABs had what they called a vaccinal effect. A vaccinal effect? Like a vaccine? Kind of. It implies the antibodies weren't just passively blocking the virus. They were somehow training or boosting the person's own immune system to recognize and fight HIV more effectively long after the antibody levels dropped. Wow. So teaching the body to control the virus itself. That's the implication. Mm -hmm. And that's a potential game changer. It's moving beyond just supplying a defense to actually improving the body's own long-term defense capabilities, huh? empowering the immune system. That is a massive revelation from ARIO, which makes the next study fresh even more important, doesn't it? Because ARIO was mostly cisgender men, mostly with one type of HIV. Exactly. The huge question is, would this hold up? Would we see this uh, incredible vaccinal effect in completely different people with different viral subtypes? That's why fresh is so critical for the global picture.
Tell us about FRESH then. Where did it take place? Who was involved? So FRESH stands for Females Rising Through Education, Support, and Health. It's based in KwaZulu-Natal, South Africa, a region with incredibly high HIV rates. And the participants. This cohort is unique. They intensively screen young HIV-negative women RNA tests twice a week. This means they can detect HIV infection extremely early, Phoebe stage one, uh -huh. often just weeks after it happens. Super early detection. Right, before the virus really gets a strong foothold. So this study involved 20 young women, all but three were diagnosed at that very early Phoebe stage one, and they started RT within just three days of diagnosis on average. Wow, incredibly fast start to treatment. Yeah. And they stayed on RT for about seven years on average. Most never had high viral loads, even initially peak usually below 5,000, and their CD4 counts always stayed healthy, above 500. So a very different group from RAO, young women, South Africa, likely different HIV subtypes, very early treatment. Absolutely, which is why it's so vital for the global cure agenda. You need to know if these strategies work for everyone. Did they use the same BNAVs as RAO? No, different ones. They used VRC07523, another one that targets the CD4 binding site, and CRA256V2, which blocks a different spot on the envelope, the V1V2 section. Okay. Any other differences? Yes. This was an open-label safety study, so no placebo group, because this specific pair of BNABs hadn't been used in people with HIV before. They also added an oral drug called vesitolimod, which is meant to enhance the immune system to see if that combination offered an extra boost. Got it. So they got the BNABs, maybe the immune booster, and then stopped RT five weeks later. What were the findings? Safety first. Safety looked generally okay. One participant unfortunately had a severe immune reaction, a cytokine release, and had to stop. But most other side effects were things like injection site reactions, which are pretty common with infusions. Okay. And the rebounds. How did people fare off art? It was mixed, as you might expect. Ten participants did have viral rebound and restarted RT before week 48. But others managed longer. Yes. Six others had a delayed rebound managing to stay off RT until week 48. And the really promising results. Echoing RIO. Exactly. Four participants continued the treatment interruption past week 48. And the latest data showed two of them still have undetectable viral loads, while the other two haven't gone above 2,000 copies. They've been off RT for a median of 1.5 years now. Undetectable for 1.5 years in this cohort. Yeah. That's really something, isn't it? It truly is, especially considering the different contexts, different virus subtypes, different population genetics. Seeing similar long-term control starting to emerge is very encouraging. Did they see that oscillating rebound pattern again, like an RIO? They did. Professor Thumbi Ndunyu, the principal investigator, noted that eight participants showed that pattern virus pops up, then disappears maybe comes back again. That viral tug of war again. Yeah. It really suggests that the immune system, perhaps primed by the BNABs, is actively fighting back, sometimes managing to suppress the virus even after it starts to reappear. It points to that same dynamic immune response. And what about the antibody levels in Farshas? Did they also decline over time? Yes. Similar story to RIO. The concentrations of the FRH BNABs drop to their IC50 level. That's where they can block about half the virus, somewhere between 22 and 31 weeks. So well before that 1.5 year mark for the participants still suppressed. Exactly. Which again, strongly suggests that the continued control isn't just down to the antibodies directly blocking the virus anymore. It points back to that vaccine-like effect. The immune system seems to have learned something. It's really striking how both studies, despite all the differences, population, location, virus type, the specific antibodies used seem to converge on this same key mechanism. It really is. Yeah. And it reinforces what Dr. Peluso was saying. This whole area, using antibodies that either neutralize the virus or, maybe more importantly, improve the body's own immune response, seems to be the most promising avenue in cure research right now. That vaccinal effect just keeps coming up. The idea that these antibodies can effectively train your own immune system to handle HIV long term. That feels like a fundamental shift. It really does. It moves the goalposts, you know, from constantly needing an external drug to potentially having your own body manage the infection. Think what that means for quality of life, freedom from daily pills. And the fact that Fresh Rush showed promise in young South African women is so critical for ensuring this isn't just a solution for a small subset of people. Absolutely crucial. Any cure strategy has to be globally applicable. Studying diverse populations, diverse viral subtypes, it's non-negotiable. Fresh Rush is a fantastic example of doing that necessary work. So putting it all together, where do these findings leave us? Are we talking about a cure? Well, we're moving closer to what's often called a functional cure or sustained remission. 
That doesn't necessarily mean completely eradicating every last trace of the virus from the body, which is incredibly difficult. Right. But means potentially getting to a point where someone's own immune system, maybe after being trained by something like these BNABs, can control the virus indefinitely without needing daily art. Living healthily without the daily medication burden. Exactly. And that would be a monumental achievement for millions globally, a huge improvement in quality of life. Okay, so let's recap the big takeaways from this deep dive. These broadly neutralizing antibodies, BNABs, they don't just delay HIV rebound when RT is stopped. They also seem to have this powerful vaccinal effect. They appear to be actively teaching or boosting the body's own immune system to fight HIV more effectively on its own. And that hints at a future that could genuinely be beyond daily pills, a real paradigm shift in managing HIV long term. Definitely. Understanding these steps forward gives you, the listener, a critical new perspective. It shows real, tangible pathways towards long term remission, offering hope grounded in solid science. Things that maybe seemed impossible not that long ago. Right. So here's something to think about. If future therapies building on studies like RIO and Fresh Ash can reliably train the immune system to control HIV after treatment stops, mm. how does that change everything? Not just treatment, but maybe prevention too. Global health strategies. Could be. And maybe even beyond HIV. Could this kind of immune training approach work for other chronic conditions? It really opens up some fascinating possibilities for the future of medicine. Thank you.